Hi, Else here, and this is the last in our series of shareholders' equity. We are going to calculate the earnings per share. We already have the information from 2017, and we're going to be using that to calculate earnings per share. Let's look at our ending T accounts from 2017. Here we know we have the preferred shares, the preferred number of shares. We have the common shares ending balance, the common share number of shares, and we also have the contributed surplus and the retained earnings. We know what the net income was, and we know the total amount of the preferred share dividend. Let's use this information to calculate earnings per share. The first step in the earnings per share calculation is to calculate the weighted average number of shares. In order to do that calculation, we need to know when all the shares were issued. There are a number of ways to calculate the weighted average number of shares. I prefer to use a timeline. The timeline always covers from the beginning of the year, in this case January 1st, to the end of the year, December 31st. For each date where new shares are issued, I show it on the timeline. For instance, on January 1st, I know that 326,095 shares were outstanding. Those shares were outstanding for the whole year. Therefore, they contributed 326,095 shares to the production of wealth in this company. On February 1st, we issued an additional 25,000 shares. As you can see on the timeline, the contribution to the wealth of the company was not equivalent to 12 months. In fact, those 25,000 shares only contributed 11 months out of the total of 12. Therefore, the weight of those shares is less because they did not exist for the whole period of time. By multiplying 25,000 by the 11 months over the 12 total months, it provides me with the number of shares that is equivalent to 25,000 if they had been outstanding for the whole year, 22,917. Next, on October 1st, we had a repurchase. Because those shares were repurchased, it reduced the amount of shares available to produce wealth for the corporation. Therefore, a repurchase is indicated as a negative. Again, October, November, December, this only impacted the production of wealth for three months. Doing this calculation results in negative 1,875 shares. Those 1,875 shares are equivalent to the 7,500 for a period of 12 months. Adding those together, we get the weighted average number of shares, which is equal to 347,137. Those are the weighted average number of shares. Now we're going to use that in our calculation. That was step one. Let's move on to step two. Step two is we have to determine the preferred share dividend. In this case, we paid $13,200 twice, once in the middle of the year, once at the end of the year. Therefore, the preferred share dividend was $26,400. Step three, calculate the earnings per share using the formula. Profit minus the preferred share dividend divided by the weighted average number of shares. Using the information available to us, we know that profit was 192,460. We already know the preferred share dividend, 26,400. We also know the weighted average number of shares. 347,137. Do the calculation and we learn that our earnings per share was 48 cents per share. Note that this is the basic earnings per share. A diluted earnings per share calculation is quite different and more complex and beyond the level of an introductory financial accounting course. In this series of videos, we learned how to record the issue of shares, both for cash as well as for an asset. We learned the entries for a cash dividend as well as the entries for a stock dividend. Finally, we learned how to record the share repurchase using contributed surplus. We also learned how to calculate the basic earnings per share. Thank you very much for joining me in these videos.